today I will be watercoloring a sketch that I have created. I started with an H pencil and light line work so that I could erase it once I put in my permanent lines. I purchased some products from Amazon that I want to try today. I've never used these before. The first one that I purchased was a Zig Rider. It's permanent. It has a dual tip with a fine liner and a more blunt tip. It's not supposed to bleed when I put water over it, so that's why I purchased that. I also purchased an Elegant Rider, which does bleed into some amazing, beautiful colors in pinks and blues and greens when you go over it with water. I've seen a lot of people do some amazing work with this, and so I wanted to try it today. I also purchased a Sharpie, fine line, extra fine point in white so that I could put in highlights and details after everything was dry. I purchased a water pan. I have never used one of these before. I did test it on a piece of paper to see how much pressure it took to get the water to the tip. Um, so far I like it. I also purchased this paint palette, watercolor paint palette. I know that they're cheaper paints and that I think is the way to go when you're just starting something so that you can get a feel for the medium that you're working in before you invest in more expensive products. I also have Canson watercolor paper in 140 pounds. It's a 9 by 12 and I have some old brushes and I know that they're not in the best shape but like I said, until I get better at using this medium, because I'm new to it, I would prefer not to um, invest a whole lot more money until I get the hang of it. I also have some frog masking tape that I've used to tape it down to a board. And I did that because I like to be able to move the board as I work so that I can get the water and the colors to run the way that I want them to. And if I tape it down to my table, obviously I can't move it. So that's why I've done that. So we're going to give these products a go today, and we'll see what we end up with. So this is actually the second time filming me painting this sketch. The first time there were a few problems that I didn't anticipate having. And so I ended up having to re-sketch my entire piece. So if you notice some variances in the drawing, that's why. The first time I went over my permanent lines with my Elegant Writer and I used my water brush to make the ink bleed and I had the skull the way that I'd wanted it and I let it dry and decided that I was going to come in with some watercolor in the eyes, the nose and the mouth and around the outside of the skull. I didn't anticipate that when I touched right up next to the lines to put in my watercolor so I had nice crisp lines that it would reactivate the ink in the Elegant Writer and it ended up bleeding into the work that I had already completed. And as I tried to fix it, I ended up scrubbing at the paper and I damaged the paper. So instead of scrapping the whole project, I decided that I would resketch it and give it another go. So I went with a rosy tone to try to pick up the pinks in the Elegant Writer. I ended up having to go over this about three times to get the opacity that I wanted so that it had some depth to it. I really liked the color of this paint. It was really pretty. It was, however, chalky. The finish is chalky, and it is hard to get it blended. It's a little patchy. You can smooth it out pretty good. You just have to take a little bit of time with it and try not to overwork your paper. That was, I think, the hardest thing for me. I'm such a perfectionist when I'm painting that I end up damaging things that are okay because I'm just so fussy about that one little spot or that one little speck. And watercolors are actually teaching me that I need to be okay sometimes with just the way things happen and not be so fussy and aim so much for perfection because sometimes it, it doesn't have to be completely perfect to be amazing. 
Anyway, I went in around the outside. This is the first time. The water brush was absolutely amazing. I think that that probably was my favorite. It was the fine point on it. It got right up next to those lines. It was able to make sharp, crisp details. It worked very, very well. I really liked it. I went in after the first coat around it had dried and I put in a second wash to deepen the color. I'm trying to make that skull pop right out of that paper. The other thing about watercolors that I'm realizing and it's a little bit frustrating is that it's not as forgiving as acrylic paint. It's not something that you can just go in and go over you have to leave the white in your paper in order to have the depth to your project. And so it's ultimately like working backwards. And it's a little bit hard to get the hang of at first. So then I went in with the Elegant Writer. Here I am tracing around the edges. I had to keep touching the marker on a piece of paper because I was trying to use the fine point, one of the edges on the calligraphy point to make the lines finer, but it was almost like it was dry, so I kept touching the paper to get it to work. Um, I went in and I drew all my lines, and I actually had to stop filming for just a second because I forgot to underline the eye on the one side. I have a piece of paper underneath my hand because if your skin touches the marker, it smudges and you don't want ink where you don't want it. So I ended up actually with one smudge because the paper came out from underneath my hand. It wasn't too big of a deal. I was able to correct it without too much fussing. But as I activated the ink with the water brush, the colors just come alive. You can see all of these beautiful pinks and blues and at the end of this video, there are some up-close shots that you can actually see. It kind of gives the skull that gray appearance that I think that it needed. It was very beautiful. I did, however, find that it, like watercolors, will leave harsh lines and watermarks. So in order to combat that, if you don't like that look, I figured out that if I lightly washed over those hard edges as I was blow drying the paper to dry it quickly, I was able to diminish some of those very hard lines. So it was a little bit smoother of an appearance. It did end up with a little bit of bleeding into that eye socket, but I was able to touch that up without too much of a problem. I went out of frame here just a little bit. I like to rotate the piece as I'm working on it, and in doing so, I didn't realize that I was pulling the piece out of the frame of the camera until after everything was recorded. So I apologize for that. I went in with some black pastel chalk and a rough brush to deepen some of the areas that I thought needed darkening in order to give the piece a little bit more dimension. Just be careful when you're working with pastels and chalks because if you get chalk on your fingers or your hands or you just flip some of the powder off of your brush onto the page where you don't want it, it can be difficult to remove. And like I said, I'm kind of fussy and so I end up damaging things by trying to fix them. So if you're going to use chalk, just go into it knowing that you have to be careful and, and cautious of making sure that your hands stay clean. After all of this was done, I went in with the Sharpie highlighter and I did some highlighting on the teeth and the bones on the higher parts. I went back in with the Zig marker also and retouched up my line work. And in the end, I was pretty pleased with the way that it all worked out. I will be using these products again. They all perform pretty well, pretty much as I expected. I'm pretty happy with the purchase that I made. I'm excited to see what new projects and new art pieces that I can create. I've had a whole lot of fun doing this and learning new techniques. 
and I hope that you guys were able to get something out of this as well. If you made it this far in the video, I want to say thanks for watching, thanks for taking the time out, and I'll see you next time. Thanks!